In this video, we're gonna build an API in I reckon about one minute. You're gonna see how straightforward it is. Don't get me wrong, you're not gonna be an API expert in one minute, but the best way to learn is to get your hands dirty and actually build something. So let's create something, therefore you can learn faster, you can start playing with it, start adding more features and functionality and bugs to it, and then you get up and running really quickly. Let me know what features and bugs that you add to your project in the comments below. And while you're down there, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. We're gonna use Next.js for this. Next.js is a full stack app, but quite often you do need a front end as well. So starting off on the API isn't a bad thing. You can use the front end later. Next.js is a framework for React. So if you're familiar with React, you'll get used to the front end, but the back end has got nothing to do with React. You'll be creating an API using that. Navigate to the folder where you want to create your project. In my case, it's the folder called repos. And then we can do npx create next app. You can specify a specific version if you want, but we use the latest. And then with the next parameter, you put the folder name, the project name, and next we'll do all the magic. So let's call this my project. Very exciting and boring name. Hit enter. It's going to install it. Yep, let's go ahead, work your magic. It will create the first commit for you. And because my git commits are signed, I need to enter my password. You won't have to enter your password unless you have a GPG key to sign your git commit. That's a whole separate story, so don't worry about this for now. And the reason why I say that is if you navigate into this folder that's got created, so CD my project, let me go to the top. We have all the Next.js files, but I want to show you if I do a git log, you will see now initial commit from create next app. And that's the time right now. You can see the top clock says 1903. And you can see this was like kind of 30 seconds ago. And this will be, be signed as well. So that's why I had to enter my password. So you don't worry about that. Next thing to do, well, I would say open VS Code. Let's open that and have a look. I'll give you a very brief tour. All your files, front end or back end, will go into the pages folder. Directly in the pages folder will be your front end. And then any API will be in the API folder and you can do paths with the folder structure, which is super awesome. So let's have a quick look at that. Well, we've got, I'll make this bigger for you. We have the hello.js. This is kind of hello world in the API. So let's, let's run that. Let me start, let me do npm run dev and let's get that up and running. So you can see now it started on localhost 3000. If I go to localhost 3000, you can see this is the app running. But if I put forward slash API, which is the folder, and then forward slash hello, we'll see it says John Doe. And if I navigate to this file, you can see it says John Doe. So if I change this to say Eddie Hub and hit save, it automatically reloads, as you can see in the terminal below. Go to this page, I need to refresh it because it's an API page. You can see it says Eddie Hub. So it does work out of the box straight away. So you have, I technically got an API working out of the box. Let's make it a bit more exciting. So here we could create other folders if we wanted to. So if you were having a whole load of um, API requests and they were going to a resource like user, we could create the folder user, probably users with an S is better. And then in there we could create a file that said, you know, for example, get list or actually just move the hello one. We don't want the hello one anymore. So let's just move that. We can move it. We can rename it to say user. So it'll be you, the, the URL would be API forward slash users forward slash users, which is not so great. So what you can do some magic routing is actually we can call this index. And so the API path, the URL path will be API forward slash users and index will automatically get loaded. So let me, let me do that. I will just create this into an array as this will probably be returning more than one user because of that path. So I've hit save. If I hit refresh, we're going to get 404. The path can't be found because we've moved the file. So we need to change it from hello to users. But there's no forward slash index at the end because index it will just be served up directly for that so you've got an api up and running and in our api we could then 
outputs, posts, gets. We could call a database. We could uh, call a third party API and combine the data with data we have. We could do all sorts of crazy things. Um, but you might be thinking, hey, wait a second, what happens if I want to use some data from the API input? Well, I'm going to show you how you can do that. So what happens if we had API users forward slash? We wanted to put the user here. So for example, Eddie Jowd, hit enter. It's going to say 404 because it doesn't know what to do with it. Well, what we can do is we can actually put this in uh, square brackets and we'll put the name that we want this to come through as and we'll say username and hit enter. So you've got username in square brackets. So the file name actually has the variable that we're going to use. So in this case, let's go to here and we're going to remove the hard coded and we're going to make it dynamic. And you can see Copilot has already suggested it's not quite right. This looks more like Express. In this case, we'll want this to be query. And we're going to pull out username. So this needs to match what we have in the square brackets on the file name. And then in here, we can say username. So let's hit save. It reloads. And we have Eddie Jowd at the top. So let's hit enter. And you can see it's changed. But you probably don't believe me. So let me put that back to Eddie Hub. Hit enter. And you can see it's changing. So we're actually using the information in the URL. Yes, you could put query parameters. You could do all sorts of things. But now we actually have the, the person's username. For example, Eddie Jowd. We could go out to GitHub's API and get my public profile from GitHub really easily. That's an API working. You could still add authentication. You still got middleware if you want to do logging on every request or rate limiting. And then later on, if you want to do a front end, you can just put information into the front end and read it from the API. It kind of works really well. This is why I'm liking Next more and more because for starters, it's a framework, which means we're putting our code into their framework. Rather, rather than with a library, you're bringing the library into your code. So I really like the framework idea. Therefore, it uses convention over configuration. So it's telling us put all your API files in the API folder. I love that. Great. Let's just all do it. Let's all be on the same page. And then for the UI, it would go in the pages folder at the root, which again is, is brilliant. I really, really like that because it's super clear. We don't have to worry about routing. Someone wants to do use a different routing library, wants to do it a different way, use a different folder structure. This means we can focus on our app itself. So I've talked a lot, so I'm pretty sure that was more than one minute. But my point is, with very little code and commands, you can get an API up and running. And there isn't much config if you want to deploy that. For example, if I wanted to deploy this to the Eddie Hub Kubernetes cluster, I would only probably need a few lines of YAML config and maybe a GitHub action to, to run that again, which is a few li lines of YAML config. My point is, things shouldn't be scary. If you wanted to add API testing for it, again, it wouldn't be too scary. With modern libraries and tools, we could actually get API testing up and running pretty quickly. You can go check out the API project on Eddie Hub that has got automated testing, which runs on GitHub Actions. You'll really enjoy that. Projects like this, where you have deployment, GitHub Actions, testing is what makes your project stand out. And you've got to have good documentation as well so other people can contribute to your project too. But you don't need loads of code in the project. So if you've got an idea, I really strongly suggest build it, try it and get some feedback as soon as possible. It's the simplest ideas that usually do the best. Look at the uh, Eddie Hub project Linktree, the open source version of Linktree. It's really straightforward. It is just a React front end at the moment. We are going to convert it to Next.js later on. So if you do want to get involved in that full stack project, when we can attach MongoDB and all that great stuff, then start practicing with the API like I showed you now. Get some practice in and you can join us on that project. And get lots of green squares for your GitHub profile. Don't forget to come and chat to us in Discord between videos and live streams. Link in the description below.